Hello everybody, this is the next video on Python programming for engineers. My name is Mark Bucker and I work at the Delft University of Technology. Today is the third video on applications of Python to probability and statistics. Today's topic is hypothesis testing or t-tests. Let's first review a few statistical terms. When you have a data set, you can calculate the mean and the standard deviation of the data. These are also called the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. And the equations are shown here as the first two equations. Note that the sample standard deviation divides the sum of the squares of the difference between the data and the sample mean of the data by n minus 1, where n is the number of data points. The sample mean is only an estimate of the true mean, <coughs> the true underlying mean of the distribution. And, and that makes sense. If you have only 20 data values or 20 measurements, the mean of those 20 values is not going to be the same as if you would have taken 1,000 or 10,000 measurements. The sample mean itself is a random variable with a distribution. And the standard deviation of the sample mean is given by this formula. It's the standard deviation uh, of the data, or the sample standard deviation, Sn, divided by the square root of n, where n is the number of data points. And you see already here that this standard deviation of the sample mean gets smaller and smaller if you take more and more points, if the data set is larger and larger. And that makes sense. If you have a lot of data, then the mean of that data, the sample mean, is going to be very close to the true mean. At least that's what you expect, and that's what we get from statistics. Imagine now that we have 20 data points, and we're going to read them in from a file using our standard load text command. The, the file is called data underscore q2 underscore 3. And we can calculate the mean of that data. We can calculate the standard deviation of that data. And remember, we want to divide through by n minus 1. So we have to give the additional keyword argument dd of is equal to 1, else it will divide by n rather than n minus 1. And maybe we also want to know how many data points we have. It turns out that the data we just read in has 20 values. The sample mean is 104 and the sample standard deviation is 34. Let's look at the data with a box plot. Box plot of the data shows us the figure. And we see indeed here that the mean is around 104, 105. This is the interquartile range. So 50% of the data fits within that blue box. And the total data goes from 40 to 160. We are now asked to determine whether it would be possible that the true underlying mean of the data is 90, which runs about right here. Right? Could it be that even though we have 20 data points with a sample mean of 104, that the true mean is 90? Or maybe you could think of it another way. If you would take 10,000 data points of this same distribution, would you indeed approach the mean of 90? To figure that out, we do a t-test. The null hypothesis is that the true underlying mean is 90, mu equals 90, and the alternative hypothesis is that the mu is not equal to 90, or h1 is that mu is not equal to 90. This is a two-sided t-test. All we can do is try to reject h0. We can never prove mu is equal to 90, but we can say that there is not enough evidence to reject H0 or reject the null hypothesis that mu is equal to 90. Now, in most statistics books, performing a t-test is like a cookbook recipe. It's almost like a trick. You have to calculate something called a t-statistic, and then you look in a table under a certain significance level, um, and, and you figure out a value and then you decide, oh, we can you reject H0 or we cannot reject H0. What we want to do is we want to visualize what a t-test does. To do a t-test, 
we draw a t distribution around mu equals 90, our null hypothesis, using the standard deviation of the sample mean that we have right here. Um, once we do that, we can draw the upper and lower limits of our interval. If we have, want to have a 5% significance level, that means we draw the 95% interval around the mean, and we figure out if the sample mean lies within that interval or outside. If it lies outside, we can reject H0. If it lies, it lies inside, there is not enough evidence to reject H0. Well, let's do that. We first import the t-distribution from scipy.stats. From scipy.stats import t. We define what our mu is. Our mu is 90. That's our hypothesis. Uh, we calculate the standard deviation of the sample mean. Let's call it sigma. It's the STD of the data. But we want to divide by n minus 1. So dd of is equal to 1. And this is the standard deviation of the sample mean. So we have to divide by the square root of the number of data points, which is 20. Um, and then we have to uh, draw the probability density function. Um, and we have to define over what range. So the mean is around 90. So let's have x go from uh, lin space from, say, 40 or 50 maybe to 130. So 90 minus 40 gives 50, and 90 plus 40 gives 130, and we do 100 points. And y is then t dot probability density function. The first argument is x. The second argument is the number of degrees of freedom. The number of degrees of freedom is equal to the number of data points minus 1. In this case, that's net 19. The location is the mean, that's mu. And the scale is equal to the standard deviation of the t-distribution, which is the standard deviation of the sample mean, which we called sig. And then we plot x versus y. And there's our graph. You notice that the peak of the graph is indeed at 90 at the mean, and we get this distribution. Uh, next, we want to draw the 95% interval around the mean. To calculate the left and the right boundary, so the left boundary is at 2.5% and the right boundary is at 97.5%, we use the PPF function. So x05, let's call it, is t the PPF of the um, percentile is 0 0.025, the 2.5% one, and the number of degrees of freedom of this t distribution is still 19, and the x975. Uh, also, this is not 05, it's 025. Sorry about that. Better name. And the x975 is the t.ppf percentile point function of 0 0.975, again, with 19 degrees of freedom. And we draw vertical lines at those two boundaries. We have the xv line uh, at x025, and we make the color equal to red. And then we draw a line at x975, the 97.5 uh, interval, or percentile, sorry, is equal also to red. Um, and we draw those two lines. Ah, we are all wrong. Why are we all wrong? Well, we forgot to specify the location and the scale, or the mu and the sigma. So let's add those. Location is equal to mu, scale is equal to sigma. Location is equal to mu, scale is equal to sigma. That's much better, right? Now notice what this means. It means that this area here is 2.5% of the total area under this curve. And also this area is also 2.5%. Together they are 5%, and we're testing for a 5% significant level. Now our t-test is whether the mean we calculate, so I'm scrolling, going to scroll all the way back up, the mean we calculated was 104.74. That was the mean of the data. The question now is, does that mean lie within this confidence interval? If it does, 
then we don't have any evidence to reject H0, that the mean is the true mean is equal to 90. If it is outside, then it is very unlikely with a significance level of 5% that the mean, the true mean is indeed 90. So let's add that line. Uh, AX V line, we want to do it at the mean of the data. We make the color equal to, for example, blue or black K. And let make, let's make the line width equal to two so we get a little heavier line. See where that line falls. There we go. Ah, the line just falls inside the 95% significance level. So what we can conclude from this is that we cannot reject H0. Yeah. So from a more practical standpoint, that means that uh, it is pretty likely the true mean might actually be equal to 90. That was all I got for you today. I hope to see you next time.